So now we're going to talk about center of mass for a set of point masses. So imagine that on a number line, I have a mass here, let's say a fairly big mass of 10 kilograms, and a second mass over here with a mass of, say, 4 kilograms. Now, if we imagine the number line like a, like a teeter-totter, like a lever, uh, we might ask, where would I need to put a fulcrum, where would I need to put a, ba a point in order to balance this and keep it from tipping? And your natural inclination might be, it needs to be closer to the 10 kilogram point, and you are absolutely right. It turns out that wherever that center of mass is, and we're going to go ahead and, uh, this is an x value 2, that's an x value 7 there, uh, wherever that point is, we'll call it x bar, it turns out that if we calculate these two lengths here and here, that the mass times the, le the length, so this length is x bar minus 2, needs to equal the mass times the length here. Okay, So smaller length times a bigger mass will balance out with a smaller mass times a bigger length. And this would let us solve for that center of mass. And we could go ahead and do that uh, quickly here just for the fun of it. So it looks like we get x bar is 48 fourteenths or 24 sevenths, which is you know, a little more than 3. Yeah, okay, that was pretty close. So that's, that's the general idea. And now let's go a little bit more. That's a more specific example, but let's, let's go a little more general. So suppose that these were at any old x1, x2 points, and the masses were m1 and m2. Then we get mass times x bar minus, minus x1 would need to equal mass times x2 minus x bar. And solving this for x bar, let's see if we can do that. So grouping all the x bars on the left and everything else on the right. So we're going to move this over. We can factor out an x bar here. So we're going to factor an x bar out and divide. So x bar will be m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over m1 plus m2. So notice in the denominator we have the sum of the masses. In the numerator we have something called a moment. Uh, it is the product of the mass times the x location uh, added up. And the division of those gives us the, the center of mass. Now in this case we did it with two masses. But it turns out that that formula can be extended for additional masses. So if I had a third mass, I would end up just tacking on an m3x3 and an m3 on the bottom. Total mass on the bottom, total moment on the top. And in sort of the discrete form, we could write that as the sum of mixi over the sum of the masses. Okay. Now, this is the general idea for the x center of mass, and then if we turn things sideways, or if we sort of did our calculations the other direction, and we imagine that we had points out in the plane, so instead of along a number line now, maybe we have the point 1, 2 with a mass of you know, 4 kilograms, the point 0, negative 3 with a mass of five kilograms and the point negative one, one with a mass of uh, 10 kilograms, maybe we're wondering not only where is the x center of mass, but also where is the y center of mass. Extending what we did here and just sort of reimagining it along a vertical axis, you can probably see that this is going to be mass times y values over the sum of the masses.
By the way, this thing here is sometimes called the moment about y, and this is sometimes called the moment about x. This is called the moment about y, because when we set the x center of mass, it's uh, talking about the tendency of the uh, sort of plane to rotate about the y-axis, or to turn this way. Anyway, so moment, uh, moments there. So, let's see if we can find the x and y center of mass for this system of point masses. So, for the x-bar, we have, again, mass times x-value. So here, negative uh, mass of 10 times an x-value of negative 1. So 10 times negative 1. Here we've got a mass of 4 at an x-value of 1. Here we have a mass of 5 at an x-value of 0. On the bottom, we have the sum of the masses, so 10 plus 5 plus 4. So calculate out, that out, we've got a negative 10 plus a 4 uh, is negative 6 plus 0, negative 6, uh, over 19. So somewhere near negative a third. So if that's negative 1, my x center of mass is going to be around here, right? That heavy mass there is, is part of what's pulling the center of mass to the left. So for the y center of mass, so x bar was negative 6 19 For the y bar, the denominator stays the same, sum of the masses. In the numerator, I've got uh, a mass of 10 at a y value of 1, a mass of 4 at a y value of 2, and a mass of 5 at a y value of negative 3. Adding that up, we have... Uh, 10 and 8 is 18, uh, and a minus 15 here gives me 3 19 as the y bar. So that is some fairly small amount here. And so our center of mass, also called the centroid sometimes, is right there. So, a way to imagine this is if I had a sheet of very, very lightweight cardboard or something like that, uh, sort of imagine that it, it didn't affect things, and we put masses here, here, and here uh, with those corresponding masses, then this would be the point where I could stick my finger and get those masses to balance. Okay? And so that's how we find center of mass for a set of point masses.